Today we're going to be making a light function to make something like this. A rough approximation of what coal sticks would look like. Coal sticks are those patterns that you see on the bottom of a pool or on the bottom of the sea when light shines on the surface of the water. We're going to be making a light function and putting that on a light in our scene to simulate that kind of effect. So let's get started. We're going to start off by making a material function because we're going to have a node setup in which we have to replicate a lot of the same node. So putting that together into a function first will save us a lot of headache when fine tuning things. The way you do that is in materials, you make a material function as simple as that. And that will call a noise scrolling material function, something along those lines. And what we're going to do here is we're going to scroll to noise textures in opposite directions of each other to create a distortion map that we're going to use on our caustics in the end. So let's start by putting in two noise textures here. And for the top one, I'm going to set it to a scale of about 4.5. And the function is going to be changed from simplex to being a Voronoi texture. We're also going to change the output minimum from minus one to zero because we don't want to have any negative numbers. Then for the bottom one, we're going to scale that up to about 10. It's also going to be a Voronoi with a output minimum of zero. But here we're going to increase the levels a little bit to about eight. Now, we're going to make these two scroll against each other. And then we're going to multiply them together. And that's going to be our output. At first, this is going to look very, very bad. Trust me, it'll look better in a minute. Starting off, we'll add a banner node because that is how we animate these kind of noise textures. So we're going to put that into the position. That gives you an error though. So we need to do something with that. And that's because this outputs a vector two and this needs a vector three. So the way we fix that is we append, append a vector, and we simply just add a zero to it. And now you can instantly also see that our noise texture has a more proper scale to it, which you can see here as well. Then, for the panel, we need a coordinate system, a time, and a speed. Well, the time is the easiest of all, because we can literally just put in the time node, and that will allow us to start scrolling. Then, for the coordinate system, we can put in our texture coordinates, but we're actually going to multiply that by another number, because this more or less just gives us a scale option. So, what we do is we add an input function, or a function input, rather, and we set an input type from being a vector three, which it is by default, to being a scalar, which is just a single value. Preview value will set to one. Multiplying the texture coordinate by a number like that is more or less just a way to create a scale parameter, which if we give this input a name, we should probably call it scale. And that then goes into the coordinates for the panner. Now, the last thing will be a speed, and that too will be a function input. This time it's going to be a vector 2. And I'm going to set the preview value to being 1 and 1. That will go into the speed. We'll copy over the spanner and append node because we're going to have to do the same thing with the bottom noise texture here. We use the same coordinate system. We use the same time input. But the speed we're actually going to change. We're going to multiply the speed by minus 1 so that it's inverted. This way, the speeds of these two noise textures will always match, but they'll always be moving in opposite directions. And that's everything there is to the material function for the noise scrolling. So we can save that, and then we can start making the actual material that we'll be using. So let's call this Caustics Material. First things first, the material domain is going to change from surface to being a light function, which immediately you will see will disable everything that is not the emissive color. Now, the function that we just made, we can literally just drag and drop that into our material here, and we can start working with it. We need to give it a vector 2 for the direction that it should be moving in, and the speed. And we need to give it a scale for, well, the scale of the noise. So we'll add a vector 2, and we'll set the x to being a 1, and put that into there. This way, this noise will scroll into the x direction. So the first one will be x positive, the other one will be into the x negative. And we'll put in a scalar here uh, for the scale, and we'll set that to 
one for the time being. And let's see what that looks like. That's pretty fast. That, that is pretty fast. We'll fix that in a minute. Before we do that, we're going to copy over these two nodes, the noise scrolling function and the vector 2. And we're going to change the x on the copy to 0. And instead, it's going to be a y. And we'll use the same scale inputs. Those two we will add together. And then we'll copy this entire setup again. And we will change the x from 1 to negative 1. And there's y from 1 to negative 1 as well. And then the outputs from those are going to be added together once more. And we will divide that for the time being by something like uh, 35. That way, if we look at the actual output, we'll be able to see that it's mostly a gray color. So since this is going to be our distortion mask, we don't want it to be too bright. As a matter of fact, we might actually want to put this up to like 60. And while we're fine tuning this, we also want to, of every single one of these vector twos, uh, put a division and divide that by something like 30 to 50. So let's go for 40. And that is then instead going to go into our scrolling function. You could put in just a very low number into the X and Y spaces here. That would work just fine. But when you're working with numbers that are this tiny, below being a value of 1. It's easy to just set it to a value of 1 and then divide it. And now we will see a much slower moving noise pattern here, which looks very nice and organic, but nothing like the call sticks yet. And that's because, again, this is our distortion mask. This is going to be our texture coordinate system. So we're going to add to this our texture coordinates. And much like we have seen before, we're going to put this into a banner as well. We know what this is like, we put in the time into the time, we create a vector 2, which I'm going to set to 1 and 1. This is the direction that the entire core sticks will be moving in your C. So if you wanted to only move in one direction, or faster in one direction and the other direction, you change this vector around to accomplish that. But it'll be moving rather fast, so we're going to, again, divide this by something like 50, and put that into the speed for the panner. And that is then going to go into a extra new noise function here. And that noise function, as we've seen before, we also want this to be Voronoi. But one thing is going to be significantly different here, and that's going to be we actually set the turbulence to being false. We don't want turbulence on this one. And we want the levels to be set all the way back to 1. We want this to be a very simple noise pattern. We still want the output minimum to be 0 instead of negative 1, though. And we're going to set the scale for this to about 10. If we then put in our banner through a append vector, of course, into the position of our noise, we will start seeing a pattern that starts to resemble what we're looking for. But it's not quite what we want. So we'll be putting this into a smooth step node, into the value slot. This is just a smooth way of clipping off either bright or dark parts of an image, we're going to be using it in a slightly weird way because we're going to set the minimum to being 1 and the maximum to being 0 0.4. Usually, you would never do this. But for this, it works out pretty well. Then we run that through a 1 minus node into the emissive color and suddenly we can see our call sticks more or less working. And from here, it's literally just fine-tuning the parameters. We want to fine-tune the scale, probably to be slightly lower than it is now. So let's set that to 0 0.4. That looks pretty good, actually. So if we apply that now, and we go back to our scene, in any light you have selected, this is a rectangular light, but it can be a spotlight or a point light, and maybe even a directional light. You can scroll down here, and at some point you're going to find a light function. And you can put in the material that we've just made. So I had the material that I made in preparation for this video in it, and now we're going to see how it compares to the one that we made in this video itself. And you can see it's pretty damn close. Of course, you can fine-tune these parameters a lot, and you can spend a lot of time on dialing in the exact look that you want. But if you want this project file, there is a link down below to it on my Patreon in the description for you to check out and or maybe just like take out this light function and use it in your own game if you want to. Or if you want a little bit of extra room to just look around 
the material functions that I have made and the material itself and how everything works and what values I am personally using in a little bit more detail, the project file is where all that information is at. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.